Attorney Thomas J. Henry is recognized across the nation for taking on the tough cases and obtaining results that speak for themselves. From the time he was a young man, he's had a passion for helping others. And after 35 years of being an attorney, he still wakes up each day with that same burning desire. Thomas J. Henry, the name you know, the firm you trust. Pickle? Hit the air right time, time for Monday morning. Monday morning fallout, of course, when we overreact to the football weekend. And plenty to overreact to on a big area round week of Texas high school football playoff action. We'll start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one, it started in February. Flashback. Zoom? Ten months ago to February, realignment day. In many respects, that is when the seeds of what we are seeing right now were planted. And we even, there's even a couple of these things that we kind of called out and said, keep an eye on this. Make sure you're looking at this, this, mm -hmm. that, and the other. And we saw those seeds sprout fruit over the course of the last couple of weeks, and especially this past week, where games like these headline matchups that we thought we were going to get, we suddenly were careening headlong into them. Right? I think a perfect example uh, of, of what we saw uh, last week was Highland Park and Denton Geyer, the game you saw live on Valley Sports Southwest. Uh, Geyer pulls away after a, a wild first quarter, first half rather. They pull away in the second half and, uh, and defeat the Highland Park. We knew pretty much for a fact that barring some sort of massive disappointment from these two teams, we would see them in the second round of the playoffs. And we did, right? A second round matchup between those two. I think you saw a lot of those in the six-man ranks as well, where we knew that, hey, Richland Springs was going to be in for a tougher uh, region. Region 4 is going to be more robust. And sure enough, they go out there, they get 45 by Lorraine this week. We saw it pretty much everywhere that you looked. Even if we didn't know exactly how these things were going to play out, we saw the kind of the seeds being planted. And by the way, more of those seeds that were planted in February are bearing fruit right now. Carthage and Gilmer is this week. We'll mm -hmm. talk more about that over the course of the week. That is one that I think we all saw coming. Another example of something that I think we... I'm not saying we saw it coming, but we, we certainly, whenever the realignment came out, we saw that's a, where our power nexus is. Take a look at District 21-6A. All four of the teams from the play, in the playoffs out of District 21-6A still alive in the regional semifinals. Take a look at District 13-4A Division 2. We took a look at Region 4 of 4A Division 2 and said, boy, sure looks like District 13 is the power nexus up there. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, all four of them were going to have two rematches in District 13-4A Division 2. Take a look. Uh, 4A Division 2? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, D2. Take a look at what we saw in 5A Division 1 Region 4 where we were talking about with the way the realignment broke what a really exceptional opportunity it was for the Rio Grande Valley to get through to potentially a state semifinal. And now there's three out of four. Three out of four from the Rio Grande Valley. Only Corpus Christi Veterans Memorial, uh, who defeated Edinburgh Vela, stay, uh, survived uh, the area around from outside the Rio Grande Valley. These are things, when we talk about when realignment comes out in February, about the roadmap, mm -hmm. about what it lays out for people, this is what we mean. Now, here... Ten months later, we're talking about these important things that we saw. I'm not saying we saw them coming. I'm not trying to give us that much credit. What I'm saying is those types of those types of alignments and those types of bedfellows that were made were suddenly we're seeing the ramifications of that in, in here, you know, nine, ten months later. That's thought number one. Thought number two, team of destiny. It is time to start considering the possibility that TCU has sold some small part of themselves to a dark place to make this happen. 
did you did you actually get to watch that game live or did you go back and and catch up on it? Uh, I I was not there. I was not okay. by the thing. It was uh yeah that was peak cardiac kid. as a person who like I really don't have anything super invested into that game you know other than like the the yeah one I of mean a we, really we, good in the, matchup in the sense that we you know and it, two it, teams were interested in yeah I was sitting there on my couch like this going oh my god <laughs> can they do it it was insane. So TCU's 11 and 0. There are two wins, and and make no mistake about it. I heard somebody say like, "Oh, would they leave an unbeaten TCU team out of the playoff?" No, not right now. No, there's only going to be a maximum. If TCU is undefeated, there will be a maximum of three undefeated teams. Mm-hmm. It will be Georgia, the winner of Ohio State, Michigan, and then TCU. Mm-hmm. They're not leaving them out for that. And if they do, we're marching to Indianapolis, yep. right? Or well, I guess no, Grapevine. Isn't no, it's it in right Grapevine. Here? We're marching to like, Grapevine. We all literally of us. could march. It's guys, like three miles. Guys, we can meet in the parking lot here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to roll up the sleeves. So TCU's two wins away from the college football playoff. Iowa State and then probably Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game. Probably. They, K-State could, could choke it away, but almost certainly. To get to 11-0, and this is cribbed from, our, from, from Roger Sherman, I believe at the Ringer. Yeah, the Ringer. TCU had a 14-point comeback, a fourth-quarter comeback to beat Oklahoma State in overtime. They had an 11-point comeback against uh, Kansas State. Mm-hmm. They that scored, was in Manhattan, too, right? They scored with 90 seconds left to beat Kansas. Mm-hmm. That and was na- definitely in Lawrence. And now they had a last-second fire drill field goal to beat Baylor. In Waco. In Waco. That's doing that on the road. I mean... Maybe the maybe the Kansas State game was at home, but the rest of those were absolutely on the road. Team the of last destiny. Two. Team of destiny. That's all I'm saying. At some, I, uh, one of my favorite podcasts is Split Zone Duo, mm-hmm. duo, and they've been saying like TCU can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> they've they only got to get. Here's the thing: to be national champions, to be national champions, mm-hmm. they only have to get away with it four more times. Mm-hmm. They've already gotten away with it eleven times. <laughs> And they're doing the the best part about this is they're doing it with Max Duggan, and I cannot tell you how many times, like how many times the past three years, run back the tape. Have it since I've been at Dave Campbell's. How many times have we said he's not a superstar? He just does what he needs to do, and they did it at the hands. Like this one against Baylor was at the hands of Max Duggan. That was a legacy drive. That sure. was at the hands that, of Max that, Duggan. That touchdown drive to, to or that 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 drive to, to set the field goal it, was a it legacy. It literally drive. felt like watching a, a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers saying, "You gave them too much." Yep. Time. There's like a minute and however many seconds left. You yep. gave them too much time, and we're saying that about Max Duggan. I'm thought number three. Let's feast. It is, of yeah. course, Thanksgiving week. We How's will have our, Gobbles doing? He's doing great. Gobbles is living his best life in our front yard. Gobbles has had to bear the cold recently. Don't worry. Gobbles is, is a hardy he's, fella. Okay, a hardy good. fella. He's prepped. First team all good. <sighs> so it's feast week, right? Thanksgiving week, the best week of the year here at Dave Campbell's Texas Football here in the world. The best week of the year. And we've got 88 UIL win or go home games scattered across the state of Texas. Okay? Now... Am I happy that none of them are on Thanksgiving? No, I'm not. I would have preferred for some for for one team to have uh, have the courage to do it. I talked with a number of coaches mm-hmm. this week. This is true. I talked with a number of coaches this weekend who said, "Yeah, we thought about it," but then like we were but like, "But guess ah. who makes the, that decision? The wives and the wives or mamas do not want a football game on Thanksgiving. I'm I, sorry, but they don't. I am here for it. Mamas and wives are not here for that. Let me just say that's lame. But that said, we still got 88 games. And the great thing, what, one thing I love about this, um, one thing I love about this is that we, is that Friday, even with no games on Thursday, on Friday, we're going to have games kicking at 1. We may have some noons. I don't know if we have an 11, but like we're going to have games mm-hmm. throughout the day, both Friday and Saturday. And that's what makes this fun, is that we're going to have this outstanding um kind of slate of games that runs throughout the course of Friday and Saturday. Oh, yeah, we have – there's quite a few 11 o'clocks. Yeah, including, by the way, including, by the way, I guess I should say, 6 o'clock on Valley Sports Southwest just announced. Carthage and Gilmer going to be on Valley. See, that's notable, but there's something even more notable about that. Why What's don't it? you tell the people? I'll tell them in a minute. What are you Three doing during that one? Three helmet stickers, a helmet sticker, 
for Abilene running back Bam Rayshaw. Do you see what? Bam. Do you see what Abilene did to Red Oak? Yes, I did. Golly. Because we had that same reaction Saturday night at about twelve thirty. Trounced them. <laughs> Twenty three carries, hundred and fifty seven yards, maybe. three touchdowns rushing out, and another thirty nine yards receiving for the War Eagles. Texas running back Bijan Robinson. Look, guys, if you're a Texas fan, if you're a Texas fan, I need you to enjoy Bijan Robinson because he's going to the league next year, and he's giving you these parting gifts because he's a special, special running back. Bijan Robinson put on a show in Texas's big win over Kansas. And finally, a helmet sticker for Georgetown quarterback Noah Boris. Noah Boris goes 21 of 24 for 385 yards and four touchdowns passing as Georgetown mollywops Magnolia West to make it to the regional semifinals. Three teams to watch. Port Lavaca Calhoun. The Sand Crabs. This team was 0 and 7. 0 and 7. They have been playing Essentially, I think they maybe could have lost, dropped one more <coughs> district game if they needed to, like, to, for the sake of honesty. But, like, let's not tell that story. Let's tell this story. They have basically had to win every game they've played for the last, like, six weeks, mm -hmm. and they've done it. And now they're through the regional semifinals. And they're and good wins, too. Like, they've done it pretty emphatically. <laughs> just, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. This team is different and weird and special, and I love it. Incarnate Word. So the FCS, we talked with um, we talked with um, uh, Corey Hogue, our small college insider, last week uh, on Texas Football Today, and this is, um, and this is, uh, you know, it was very important for them, in my opinion, to get the seeding that they did. They got the number seven national seed. They got in the top eight. That means they get a bye to start the year. That is a huge, hu or to start the playoffs, that is a huge advantage for them. Keep it on. I was like, word. oh, we're restarting? <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. They I ain't get, ready for that yet. They get a bye to start the playoffs, <laughs> and that is a huge advantage for Incarnate Word. And finally, South Oak Cliff. Man, they squeaked it out. Okay. There's a lot to talk about here. So if you missed it, the final score was something like 42-37. 42-37, yeah. This was 42, like, it was, in fact, I can tell you, into the fourth quarter, late in the fourth quarter, uh, it was 42-10. Mm -hmm. This game was over, okay? And Lovejoy, against the, against the twos, South Oak Cliff pulled all their guys, mm -hmm. and Lovejoy made a, made, a, made a comeback of it and got, like, two or three onside kicks, and it got kind of crazy at the end. South Oak Cliff was only in peril of losing this game at the very, very end. Make no mistake, they dominated this game, and here's the real thing, okay? Ashley Pickle. Hmm. 553 yards of total offense. They ran the ball for 414. Danny Green, Tedrick Williams, Javon Thomas went nuts in this game, and that that is problematic for the rest of 5A Division two because they're going to run the ball like that. Keep an eye on that. And by the way, like I said, they pulled their two, they pulled all their guys, mm -hmm. like, and, and Lovejoy made a close. So do not look at that final score, in my opinion. Um, if you if you missed that, if you weren't able to watch that game live and you're jonesing for some football sometime this week, go back. You can watch it on TexanLive.com. If, you, if you're a subscriber to Texan Live, go back and watch it because it's, it's a fun watch. Three to see. It's Carthage Gilmer, 6 o'clock from Lobo Stadium in Longview. Uh, this is big boy stuff. What are you doing for number this game, Greg Pepper? Number one versus number two. Number one versus number two in 4A Division Two. It's the game we've been waiting for. And another example of when realignment came out in February, Carthage in Region 2 with Gilmer and Pleasant Grove. This is the big boy stuff. Carthage and Gilmer. Don't make me tell them. Tell them right now. Or I will, and that's not my news to tell. It'll be Craig Way and myself on the call on Bally Sports. Whoa, Northwest. that's we'll exciting. Are you are you juiced? I got a call with Alan Metzl a little bit later. I'm nice. Excited to talk with him. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Oklahoma at Texas Tech. So Tech's bowl eligible. Got a big win over Iowa State. Gutty win on the road, fourteen ten. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow. <laughs> you said in the Slack, you just said, Joey. <laughs> Keeps getting away with it. He did it. Got him to a bowl, which is a minor <laughs> miracle. You were there. 
you were there in San Antonio in July mm-hmm. when somebody uh, we were at like the tech uh, alumni thing. Yeah, we got invited to it at Casa Rio. Shout out. We were and so we were there, and McGuire got the mic and he was taking Which some was questions. Which was inevitable. <laughs> he got he uh, he did an opening statement, had some questions, and said, "Well, let's take some questions." Mm-hmm. And some guy said, "What's the timeline on the new renovations?" to Jones Stadium. Mm-hmm. They just got a big gift. They're going to do major renovations on one of the end zones. And he said, we're going to beat Oklahoma and then we're going to knock down the we're going to knock down the south end zone. I think it's the south end zone. Mm-hmm. He, got um, an opportunity to be right. Mm-hmm. Got an opportunity to be right. Finally, Fort Bend Marshall and Montgomery Lake Creek. Just Lake up. Creek is unbeaten, mm-hmm. 12 and 0. Tyvon Byers has been fantastic. Fear the beard. And here comes the a real test here in region in region. 